Hello everyone, my name is Blaine Pearson and I'm a graduate instructor in Texas Tech's Personal Financial Planning Program. In this video, we're going to look at ratio analysis. Let's begin by looking at ratio analysis and how financial ratios will allow you as a financial advisor easily to be able to examine a client situation. So what financial ratios first allow us to do is track progress toward financial goals. So when we have these ratios, we can have some historic indicator and some comparative indicator of how our clients have been doing and uh, where they are at in achieving their financial goals. It also allows us to, as I, as I briefly mentioned, evaluate the performance over a period of time. We can take a look at uh, something like a liquidity ratio or something like that to make sure that it is uh, in line uh, with, with their goal. And what also allows us to do is quickly gain insight into the financial situation of the client. Uh, the, the easiest way I like to describe ratio analysis, just to use an analogy, is think of ratio analysis as uh, kind of like going to the doctor's office. They check your weight, they check your blood pressure, etc. And it gives the doctor this really nice, quick, to the point information sheet of your summary. And that's kind of what ratio analysis is for financial advisors. Now, it also, in that process, generates questions that we can use to then ask clients further insight on. So, Mr. Johnson, why is your cash flow ratios what they are? Why do your debt to equity ratios not look so high? Those kinds of questions that you know, ratio analysis can be a great thing to, to prompt and, uh, and investigate. Now let's look at different categories of uh, these different ratios that we have. And from there, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the individual ratios at the very end. So liquidity ratios basically deal with how can clients meet their short-term or their current less than 12-month financial obligations. So how liquid are the clients? Is, is all the liquidity, different liquidity ratios measures? And then we have savings ratios, which look at Okay, how much are they saving in terms of percentage of income? How much are they saving in terms of net worth or some other kind of, of denominator as, as we'll see later? And we have our debt ratios, which do help us with the ability to manage debt, but also give us insight into the financial leverage of the client. And if they are compared to the risk tolerance, either maximizing that leverage opportunity. And then lastly, there are some housing ratios that are out there and there should be some investment ratios as well. And these two different categories of ratios are more uh, long-term uh, ratios. Housing is, is pretty good to, uh, kind of bleeds over into cash flow a little bit, but uh, investment ratios definitely to, uh, gives insight into how the clients are in achieving their, their long-term goals. So let's talk about the art and science of ratio analysis. What's interesting is the art and science this term was, was coined by Mike Finca, who is a, or was a professor here at Tech, and the science element of, of this is actually getting in there, calculating the ratios. And the art is deriving meaning from the inside of the ratios, and that's really where 90% of this ratio analysis is. It's, a, it's really an art. And so let's say, for example, we have a client who has a maybe a cash reserve ratio that, that is high. Well, is there a reason for that? Well, maybe the client works on commission, doesn't have a steady stream of income, therefore they may need a larger cash reserve balance. So being able to derive meaning from art and understand the reasoning why these ratios are what they are is, is very, very important. So let's, let's end with some of the keys to ratio analysis um, with this slide um, and, and asking does the ratio answer the question that's asked? So if we're prompted with a financial goal of the client, obviously we want to look at the ratios that are most relevant uh, to achieve that goal. And we also want to make sure and look if there is a standard or a benchmark to determine whether the client is on pace. And if not, maybe why is there that deviation? Why does that deviation appear? And benchmarks are great and they, are what they are, they are benchmarks, right? To use my example from earlier with the doctor, yes, you may have your weight, et cetera, examined your height, and from there they may come up with a body mass index or a BMI, and the BMI could be off. 
because maybe you you have an incredible amount of muscle or something like that, and you're extremely healthy, you just have a larger weight. Um, does that mean you're you, know, you need to lose weight? You need to make you know changes to your diet, lifestyle, etc. Not necessarily. So why benchmarks are great, and it kind of gives us a rule of thumb estimate. We also have to be able to look at the relevant factors surrounding that. So we'll close here and then I will leave with a few sheets that you can pause the video um, to kind of look at the different ratios that are out there. So there's not one generally agreed upon set of financial ratios, right? So some people may heavily use the liquidity ratios that, that they prefer and some may use others that they prefer. So there's not one standard standard go to. And even from there, all financial professionals and specifically personal financial professionals don't necessarily agree on the definitions of the terms used to calculate those ratios. So while we may have this set of rules that we follow by, it may not translate to other personal financial professionals. So we want to also make sure that we understand how they arrived at what they arrived at. Uh, so let's take a look at the handout and we will uh, end there. Here is the first handout that I have available. Please feel free to pause the, the video here and take a look. Here is the second handout of the different ratios that are out there and available. Again, this is Blaine Pearson, and in this video, we covered ratio analysis. Thank you for watching.